peace. Welcome to Soulful Sundays, where we embark on a conversation to get us more in touch with our soul. Last week we talked about fear and how it is the ego's way of fighting against the concept of death. The concept of death. The ego deals mainly in concepts. Reality is a little scary for the ego, especially the older you get. <laughs> Before I really get into it, when we talk about the ego, a lot of people say things like, oh, you got too much ego, or oh, you got to get away from the ego, or some people even say you have to kill the ego. That's not what this is. We are healing the ego. This is about healing the ego. The ego is a tool. And it has a purpose, a very real, beautiful purpose. Its purpose is to help you understand where you are in relation to the world around you. You really can't operate in this world without an ego. You will fail very quickly. That's why it's funny to me when I see all these so-called healers saying things like, kill the ego, or I kill the ego. No, no, because as I said, the ego is so tricky that a statement like, I must kill the ego, I'm killing the ego, the ego will hide behind that. It'll pump that up. Yeah, I killed the ego. Ha ha. <laughs> no, you have to be careful. You have to watch. Um, and you don't, we don't kill the ego. We heal the ego. Now, how do we know when our ego is not functioning its best? How do we know when we have an unhealed ego? If you find yourself assuming the worst, you might be dealing with an unhealed ego. Now, in this society, it's not hard to assume the worst. <laughs> We are so polarized. It's, it's very easy to say, these people are all like that. These people are all like this. Um, but that's not, the, that's not the facts. That's not the reality. But like I said, the ego kind of finds reality scary. Um, <laughs> so it fights against it sometimes. And one of the ways it fights against it is assuming the worst. Because if the worst happens, but you've already assumed it, then it's not really going to hurt you as much, right? You're not going to feel too much pain because you assumed it was going to happen and then it happened. So it's like, well, at least I was prepared this time. It really what that speaks to is an unhealed trauma from the past that instead of healing it, you decided to protect yourself from it. Mm. We'll get into that later. That's a little bit deeper. Um, assuming the worst. That's it. We don't have to assume the worst. You don't have to put on this protective armor and go out into the world with it like everything bad is going to happen. Like somebody's about to break into your house or somebody's going to, on the street, they're going to snatch your purse or um, your friend is going to badmouth you or, I don't know, whatever you think, whatever your ego is trying to fight so hard against, you don't have to live life like that's going to happen. Now, look, look, I'm going to give you an example. One day, it's cold outside. It's 30 degrees. You wear your coat, your scarf, your hat, gloves, you ready. <laughs> you ready for the weather. You go outside and it's cold and you feel good because you are prepared. You feel about as good as you can. Now, the next day comes and you're like, you assume it's going to be cold again. So you put everything on again. Coat, hat, scarf, gloves. You ready again. You step outside and it's 72 degrees. Now, I think everybody 
would take in the information that they just got from outside, then would turn around, go back inside, change. <laughs> take that coat off, take that scarf off, those gloves probably gonna come off, the hat. Put on something that's more appropriate for the weather. That's because we take in the information from outside and make adjustments. You see where I'm going with this? That's not really what the ego does. When you assume the worst, that's like putting on all those clothes and going out, seeing that it's not really like that, but then saying, well, you know what? I'm just going to keep this on because one day it's going to be cold again. And whenever it is cold again, I'm going to be ready. <laughs> no, it's not a season of coldness. <laughs> It might be, might be the first day of spring or it might be, you know, who knows? Who knows? It might just be a fluke warm day in the winter. But you just missed out on all that goodness, all that comfort, because you decided to stay in this mode of assumption. Hmm. That's not how I like to live my life. I like to see the world, take it in, and if someone gives me pause, I'll tell you what I do. I ask for more information. <laughs> I get more information. I ask them questions, and it's not like I believe everything they say, but I take in what they say, and I take in what they don't say. I take in their body language. I take in their hesitation. And I make my choices based on that. This is how we deal with making assumptions, assuming the worst. We ask for more information. That's it. Just get more information about the situation. Before you... Assume the worst before you throw somebody under the bus, before you tarnish somebody's name, before you ruin a friendship. Ask for more information before you cut your family members out of your life. Ask for more information. I know you don't want to be hurt again and it's OK. But if you just avoid. Any situation where the slight possibility of being hurt is there, you are going to live a very lonely life. And you're going to be trying to convince yourself that it's not lonely, but it is lonely. There's so many lonely people out there. The past eight years have split up so many friendships, families. People are just not connected. And we have this false sense of connection in our phones, but it's not real. We need real human to human interaction and we need real forgiveness. And the best way to get there, the best way to start on that path is don't make assumptions. Word to Don Miguel Ruiz, <laughs> the four agreements. Next week, we will continue this conversation on fear and the ego. Thanks for rocking with me this week on Soulful Sunday. See you later. Peace.